Hello and welcome. This is a video where I explain what artistic susceptibility is. It is something that I've been talking about for a very long time and um, I'll try to explain it because I don't believe anyone else has actually. M often these terms are used uh, so I'll actually talk about this artistic susceptibility and I'll talk about retrocausality because they are highly related. There is a clear distinction between retrocausality and predictive programming. Many people uh, making presentations, videos about these subjects they are saying that there is a predictive programming about this and that and someone is putting up the surroundings for controlling the future with, uh, with predictive programming almost as a ritual okay I understand the idea of rituals, but this is not what it is about. Um, not really. I would say almost that it has to do with mathematics and fractals. The fractal nature of reality, something that I have been talking a lot about. Um, so, what is predictive programming? What is the distinction and the difference between predictive programming and retrocausality? This is something that I already have been talking a lot about, but it was a long time ago. I'll do it again. Predictive programming is regular causality. Uh, uh, a past event, a past event creating a future event. You see, a future. Cause and effect, you see, Predict predictive programming is a cause that creates an effect in the future. And this is a misconception about reality in my opinion. Maybe I would even say that there is no predictive programming, okay? Because it's too complicated. And it can be best seen and best understood in how an artist expresses something, something uh, about this fractal of reality that it is susceptible to. It picks up on the nature of what's happening in the fractal and it paints it. It doesn't even know what it's doing. It just does it in a beautiful way. Uh, the, and so the artists are beautiful creatures that express, express reality for us to help us understand the nature of reality, the fractal of reality. And this is artistic susceptibility. And if there is a science behind this artistic susceptibility, it is the retrocausality. Why retrocausality? And what is retrocausality? Something from the future affecting the past. It is. How can that happen? Well, how can a fractal exist? Because how is a fractal made? A reg regular Mandelbrot fractal or any fractal that you will find is made from a feedback loop, a feedback loop, not, not causality, where, the, where you have a cause, a cause and an effect, but a feedback loop where the future is going back to the, to the past. This is the way to create a fractal, and this is why reality is a fractal, and it has fractals in, in small parts, like a tree, a tree that you can see or anything really everything is this fractal so it's retrocausality it's a feedback loop and this is what also I like to 
maybe play around with a bit that I have done in my channel. This is maybe even the purpose of my channel, to use retrocausality to, uh, to uh, meddle in the fractal a bit and, and to, uh, to get to know it, to understand it, to understand this environment. This is something that the artist will pick up on. The artist will sense sense the the state of the fractal. It senses it senses the 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 changes in the fractal, and this is why an artist will never stop painting an artwork. It will always paint because. And some say there is no time, there is no history, the history always changes. Something is changing, awareness is changing, and it changes back in time, the artist picks up on it, and it will never stop painting that painting, and, it, and the painting will always change, the painting will always the, the smile of Mona Lisa will always change. The smile will always change. Maybe even the Bible will never be fully written. It is always written, the Bible. There is always information going back in time to do these changes. And this is not predictive programming. On the contrary, retrocausality is, is the opposite theory of predictive programming. Retrocausality makes fun and, and mocks the ideas of, of conspiracies. Really. No one really is in charge. Um, there is a retrocausality. There is a fractal in charge of everything. It, it, is, um, it is why. And predictive programming is, is, um, is a fallacy. Predictive programming is wrong. It is wrong. You get it? It is faulty. There is no predictive programming. There is no great plan. There is awareness playing in, in the construct of reality. The reality itself is almost alive. Okay? Because what is life? Maybe a fractal structure. You have fractals inside of you. Every every tissue of is a is a self representation as in the big, so in the small. You zoom in; it looks similar. Things next to each other that is the same. There is no really unique cell. Many cells doing the same thing, and these cells create a larger thing together. You see? All possible thanks to the retrocausality. Okay? So, retrocausality is the idea that goes against predictive programming. And artistic susceptibility is our way of perceiving this retrocausality. The art is a way to understand reality and um, the artist is the greatest preacher. There is no greater preacher than the artist drawing the art and there is no point in communicating the, the meaning of art almost as I am doing, I'm trying to communicate. Maybe there is no point in doing that. The artist will never know what it's painting. It never knows about it. It just happens. Okay, that's all. See you guys.